Welcome back to our special Indianomics on unsecured credit. I now have with me Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, the former chairman of State Bank of India and now chairman of several fintechs, uh, actually, like uh, Bharat Pay. He's also heading MasterCard. His knowledge of banking and fintechs makes him best placed to analyze the scare of unsecured lending. Mr. Kumar, thank you very much for your time. Well, first, you know, the Reserve Bank's argument has been unsecured loan is growing too fast. You know, in many banks, it is growing at 35, 40 percent. Is that reason enough to be worried, especially because some banks are new to retail? You know, so your, your, your thoughts. Yeah, no, RBI as a regulator, they have a lot of data and if they are saying something that would be based on data. So more than the growth that who is doing it, what, if it is a low base, then obviously the growth rate would look 30%, 40%. If the base is big and on that you are on top of it growing at 35%, then it's a different. But as a portfolio strategy of any lender, they should have a uh, portfolio in mind that how do their portfolio look like mm. what is their risk appetite and in that portfolio what would be the percentage of secured loan or unsecured loan what would be the percentage of corporate loan and uh, then uh, there is uh, something called risk adjusted return on capital mm. obviously on housing loans which are fully secured these trends are low but it is secured so is the case with the credit cost which for most of the portfolio would be less than 1%. Yeah. Unsecured loan, obviously the credit costs are high. So this is also an issue around that how these loans are priced. But uh, as far as the RPA is concerned, if they have certain data, the statistics and uh, about certain NBFCs or banks, uh, if they are going too fast for their comfort, mm. so it's all right. RPA can put it out of caution. Okay. And the other thing, uh, no, they are... if... One of the bankers said that, you know, so some banks are even lending personal loans for seven years. Normally, personal loan tenors are shorter. Uh, is this uh, what is scary? Uh, yeah, yeah, that I would agree. That personal loans and debt to unsecured are not uh, given for uh, long term. They are uh, by nature short term and uh, recoverable in uh, EMI and now. EDI, equated in his movements, like uh, we have moved from EMI to EDI for the smaller loans. So one thing I am very clear about any bank or NPFC or any organization that one should not do a business which they don't understand or have not created capability to handle. So personal loans, if you are doing, say, for example, manually, or if you are not fully digitized, you don't have digital analytical capabilities, you don't have control over the cash flow, then it is a different type of risk, which is uh, building in the okay. book. Yeah, so you know, this uh, under five, 50,000 crore, uh, under 50,000 rupee loans, that is what uh, Sibyl is pointing out, is showing a uh, greater delinquency. And you know, uh, do you think fintechs are the problem? Because there are, because of buy now, pay later, they are giving three, four loans. There are, there are people with three or four loans at the same time. Uh, is that what the Reserve Bank needs to look at? No. Of course, Reserve Bank as a regulator has to ensure that there is no systematic risk developing uh, as far as the loan portfolio of banks or NBFCs is concerned. And, uh, uh, and uh, they have to be taken uh, with a lot of respect. Uh, if they are saying something, I have found that when RBI says something, they uh, do it on the basis of certain data and their assessment is general. So that is one. But also at the same time, about uh, the uh, the growth in personal loans, a lot of banks have done rebalancing of their own. About uh, one person taking too many loans, mm. then it would impact their civil school. Mm. And uh, most of the lenders, and you were talking about the fintax, and because I happen to chair the board of Bharat which also facilitates uh, a small value loans, although our ticket size is not as small as being 50,000. Uh, but we facilitate a small value, small ticket size loan to the SMEs, and uh, which are uh, otherwise not able to access the formal uh, yeah. market, yeah. like banks or NPCs. So uh, fintechs have shown <laughs> a certain way of 
that how do we handle these type of loans okay. and uh, as i said it is all about the business strategy it's all about the capability to underwrite risk it's about the capability to recover and have control over cash flows and uh, so if it is a well thought strategy mm. uh, then uh, i think uh, there is not a for it is like any other net business okay. And delinquencies in these type of loans are higher, but okay. that's why the pricing of the loan is exactly. also higher. If yeah. you look at at nine percent, mm. these type of loans you can't get below twenty to twenty four percent. That's true. The other thing which I would like to mention here is uh. that all these people today who are like being approved by fintechs or NBFCs, these are the people who also borrow in the informal or unauthorized market. And that comes at a very very high cost. It is difficult to even calculate that at what cost does it come. When mm. they are in need, they will borrow, and it will be that you give me thousand rupees today, and after fifteen days I will give you two thousand rupees. Mm. So this type of transaction nobody even calculates that what is the cost of borrowing or lending in the informal okay. market. So digitization and capability to use technology. In analytics and so many other things in underwriting, so that is an enabler. So this is the push side, and on the demand side from the people, obviously, the country is at a growing at a good level. So I call it a Americanization of <laughs> personal loan markets in India. India. So that is what's happening. Earlier, it was unthought of that uh, people would borrow money. There was a certain hesitancy amongst yeah. Indians borrow money, but that's going on. Yeah. that i take your point sir thank you very much for pointing out to this behavioral change uh, in india and the fact that every institution uh, should only enter where it is prepared with uh, the skills to lend to that market thank you very much we are out of time but the main take away from our speakers has been that uh, at the moment it is not a systemic problem it is a small problem and the reserve bank is right in forewarning that it doesn't get very big Uh, we have to keep our eyes open on whether the guys who are borrowing three four loans from various fintechs uh, you know don't start defaulting on their auto loan from a bank so that's what uh, the reserve bank has worried that it doesn't expand but uh, i think all parties have been forewarned so maybe it won't become that big a problem after all thank you very much for watching this special edition on unsecured debt